one more. Dose. Hello Agents and welcome back to another Division Build video. This is the first in a series of two videos that I'm going to do for the first boss in the Iron Horse raid. Uh, I've just recently published a guide for that and I said in that guide that I would publish the two build videos so that the videos aren't too long. I've split them up into three different parts. This is going to be the DPS build that I'm going to show you now. And it looks a little bit unconventional. It certainly doesn't look like something we see on a day to day. But I'll go over the reasons why we're using this. And also, if a few of you people in your raid run this build, you'll have no problem getting down in like 10 seconds. It's absolutely amazing in the damage output of what it does. First of all, I'm going to start with the specialization. I'm not going to go over the specialization trees in this video. Uh, that's done way too many times now and I think we all know what does what but I'm running firewall because firewall gives my team 10% extra multiplicative damage by me being within 10 meters of the boss and in the video that I showed with the guide I'll link in the description down below everybody's within 10 meters we're all really really close if you need stability you can run sharpshooter but that would probably be up to the person that is putting opportunistic onto the boss so I would leave that to them uh, you can also run demo just in case you get hit by the mortars that are coming raining down. But then that also provides a 5% buff to damage to your team for damage to target out of cover. They're the three that you really want to be playing with with this boss. Really, really helpful for team synergy. Sweet Dreams I'll go over first. So I'm using the Sweet Dreams because right at the beginning there is three shield guys that come out with the boss and they've got to die first. So three people use the Sweet Dreams in my team and we all just hit them guys and they're dead instantly. Then giving us plenty of time to unload on the boss and get him dead before any more ads come out. As you can see, if you are unaware, Sandman melee attacks instantly kill non-elite enemies. So reds and purples will instantly die when you punch them with this gun equipped. The next gun I'm using is the Burnout. I've got a really, really good one. I think a lot of people have. We got that many caches from a previous event. Chances are you've got a good one sat in your stash. Uh, but you want good assault rifle damage, good health damage, and good damage to target out of cover. The reason that I'm using this though is because you know the damage is super high, the RPM is super high as well. As you can see, it's a named FAMAS. FAMAS is one of the best assault rifles that we have in the game right now. But then reloading from empty grants 40% weapon handling. It makes it an absolute laser beam. It reloads really quickly and it's just a lot of damage really, really fast. You, it might look strange that the scope I've got on it right now, but I'll go over that in a few seconds. Other options that you could possibly run uh, that I sometimes run, I run an MG5 with fast hands. That works really well as well. If you prefer that, as you can see, look, damage is only slightly less, 800 RPM, again, just slightly less, but you get a lot more bullets, and you could perhaps think about running Gunner at that point as well, but just be aware of the team synergy with the rest of the specialization. It's really important for this first fight that you're maximizing damage, because you've got to get him dead before that second set of ads come out. But I would recommend the Burnout, I'd recommend MG5. Some people I've seen come and use the Bullet King and that works okay as well. The damage is a little bit less, but as long as you've got enough damage as a team to take him down before the second set of ads come out, you're fine. Now, we're gonna, the sidearm doesn't actually matter. So now I'll go over the build. Uh, just a quick look at my stats before I start. My crit chance is low because we have some people, two people running the Coyotes mask in our squad as well so that makes up for my crit chance i have really high crit damage then because of this as well you can see i've got eight percent armor damage and 19 percent health damage and i've got 102k weapon damage the health damage is really really good for this boss actually because you get his armor down and then it's kind of a fight for burst damage because he likes to heal himself so getting that getting his health down before he has chance to heal himself the health damage with some ARs is really, really nice for this fight. I'm running a Femris mask because I want one piece Femris because I want the 10% assault rifle damage. And then obviously it's just the standard red stats that you're looking for for everything else. You want high crit damage and high crit chance. 
depending on how many coyotes masks you're running you might be afford to drop quite a lot of crit chance like myself but just be aware that you might only be able to if you're only running one you might only be able to run around drop around 10 percent crit chance so just be aware of that when you're putting your build together safety i would go with 50 percent crit chance if you're going to be running in pickup groups chances are you can always get one person to put a coyote's mask on if you're running a, a team a synergy group you can probably drop close down to like 40 because if you look here we get 10 percent from the 15 to 25 meter damage and then we get a further 25 percent from the 25 meter so that person can place themselves strategically and you can make up 35 percent critical hit chance there next we're going to look at my chest piece and this is the right why i've got a scope on my ar so high weapon damage again high crit chance and crit damage across all your reds pretty standard but i'm running perfect focus you can obviously run standard focus here if you really wanted to uh, and perhaps put it on a providence chest piece would work also really really well because that's going to give you a two-piece bonus then for the brand set and give you critical hit chance so a couple of options for you there but focus increases total weapon damage by six percent every second i am aiming while scoped eight times or higher up to 60 percent which is absolutely huge so that's why we have the scope on so if we look over here now at the mod and you can see i've got the eight times scope on which gives me 30 percent headshot damage as well but that is why i'm running that because it's no glass cannon not have to worry about incoming damage and perfect focus at max as well puts out way more damage than any other talent on the chest piece so as we're not moving we're just going to be stood still we're going to be focusing on putting all the damage on the boss that's what you want to be running with holster you've got a couple of options again i've gone with the group or holster with crit chance and crit damage the brand set bonus for one piece gives me 15 percent critical hit damage but Again, think about what you're running with. Think about your teammates. You could perhaps run a Seska instead and get yourself some extra critical hit chance. Or you could run a Providence because, again, the two-piece Providence bonus, that's going to give you another 10% critical hit chance as well. So just think about that when you're putting the build together. Your situation might be a little bit different to mine. Backpack, we're going with Vigilance. 25% total damage by, you know, just just shooting. I do tend to take cover a little bit you don't have to in this fight and you'll see in the video that i published with the guide a lot of my other teammates just stand out in the open because we've all got to be grouped together but there's a little wall on the left hand side and i tend to take cover just behind that so that if i do take a shot uh it's chances are it's not going to hit me and i won't lose my 25 percent damage from vigilance we use decoys though to combat that as well Again, that was all reds, crit chance and crit damage in the attributes. Contractor's gloves, best in slot, generally for all red DPS builds. Because of the damage to armour is super nice. And then on the knee pads, again, Fox's Pros, generally best in slot for all red DPS builds. Because of the damage to target out of cover. And that's it. So just to just around a little bit depending on if you've got coyotes masks or not with your crit chance maybe swap the holster out don't worry you can always run a femris holster if you wanted to and then run a different a providence mask so you've got plenty of flexibility with what you need to swap out to achieve this the most important thing is having focus and having a gun the mg5 takes the eight times scope as well so don't worry about that then the famas and the named variant takes the scope as well so you've got plenty of options there for you to get anywhere near it. Then we're running the booster hive, which we we'll talk about in the bit in the video is best in slot. For this, for the, what we're doing, we're all going to drop it. We're going to get overcharge, and although we don't get, we're not six yellow, we don't get, you know, what that would give us on a six yellow overcharge. We get the healing from the the healer. He's on the six yellows, and it makes it really really nice. So you get the damage boost. From this you get the stability bonus you get the reload bonus you get the accuracy bonus so you're shooting an absolute laser beam especially when you're reloaded for the first time as well and you've got perfectly on empty and then obviously decoys a few of these scattered around so that if you are taking slightly longer to kill the boss 
you've got about 20 seconds I think it lasts let's just double check that so we can see duration is 19 seconds so if you throw that just as the boss comes out you've got 19 whole seconds that's the time you've got to get the boss dead because that's the amount of time that any ads that come out are going to be distracted and that's everything i hope that was useful do check out the links in my description below with the guide and i show you how to to use this build on that first fight and how easy it really really is it's not too different from a normal build i think the strangest things are me having a scope on my ar but i think a lot of people have a focused chess piece in the stash that they can use and then obviously you can use providence gear you can use femris if you're using an ar just to do exactly the same thing that i'm doing put the hive on put the decoy on and away you go thanks for watching everybody do come and check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DJ Tickle, where we're running raid help every time I stream, and I stream most days over there. Hit that subscribe button for more Division content, and if you don't mind, hit the bell as well so that you are notified. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, or comment down below in the comments, and let me know what you think. Has this build made your life easier in pickup groups? Do you guys run something slightly different? I'll be always interested to know down in the comments. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.